I'd just like to give you as an update on uh, the last few days. I've actually been very busy. Uh, numerous things have taken place, uh, and the organisation is well. Believe it or believe it not, it has actually grown. Uh, our achievements is actually grown, um, and just to give you a quick example. Uh, the families of the King's Mills met with the First Minister uh, on Monday evening. And I have to give credit where credit's due. And the First Minister met with the families of the King's Mills. And it was very much appreciated by the King's Mills families. The fact that the First Minister and Geoffrey Donaldson uh, took time to meet with them. Because uh, uh, this is basically a long drawn a process with these families there's been a lot of work going on with these families and the first thing I have to say they're fully committed to this organization and they're fully committed to the work that this organization is doing on their behalf and that's uh, the families from the Kingswell massacre on its own never mind all the rest of the inquiries that we have ongoing I have to say Peter Robinson uh, treated them well. He showed a lot of respect to the families for what they'd come through. And um, there was other things raised as well, you know, outside of uh, the whole issue of the King's Mills, uh, which the First Minister's promised to look into. And I actually believe that he was uh, truthful in what he said. And like I said before, I give credit where credit's due. And I think in this instance, uh, the First Minister deserves credit for how he's handled the whole issue with the King's Mills families uh, and the meeting and the other things that were discussed in that meeting. To move on, uh, we were over uh, yesterday, had a meeting in the Foreign Office um, with obviously people from the Foreign Office and uh, legal representatives and also some of the politicians and other people involved in this campaign. Uh, it was a good meeting, it was robust. Uh, I was surprised, I have to say, and I will be asked the question. There was representatives there from the Northern Ireland office. Uh, personally, I have nothing against them, but I have to ask the question where they've been for 10 years while we've been campaigning on this. And uh, I just hope there's not a view that uh, certain elements can move in and take this over, because that won't be happening. I can guarantee you 100% that that won't be happening. That, uh, because I know there is people, and a number of the victims on the writ are concerned that uh, governments would try and take control of this. That will not be happening. The legal people are dealing with this, and then... There is maybe other parts of this that has still yet to be worked out, but the victims have been to the forefront and will remain at the forefront of that. I want to make that clear. This is about justice, not simply about funding uh, or money or compensation. It is also about justice. And uh, that is why it is important that the victims are seen to be at the head of this. This whole issue of Libya and the compensation and what's happening out in Libya. The Prime Minister has promised that uh, it is top of the agenda along with the security of the country. It is going to happen. But here's something I want to put. I think this is important. In the 10 years of campaigning and even going over to London yesterday, do you know who paid for it? The victims. This campaign that's went on for 10 years has been paid for by the victims. Every penny that has been used to go to these meetings, to do the lobbying, to send out the literature, whatever, come out of the victims' pockets. It come out of no government body, which is not a total disgrace. The size of the package that we're talking about at this stage. And we haven't a penny coming into this organisation to help the victims. Not one penny. 
coming from any government body to help the victims of South Armagh, we're still having to pay for it out of our own pockets. And the people who now want to jump on the bandwagon, when I say to you, the bandwagon is left and there's no room on it. And whoever does come on board will be brought on by the victims, for the victims. So I want to make that quite clear. The other thing I want to make clear here, uh, on this issue of fun, Fair has not been found guilty of anything. And indeed, it is actually the opposite. We have been commended for how well we have kept our financial records. And it has also been acknowledged, not only by the police and the PPS, but indeed by the, the funders themselves, that not one penny, not one penny in 13 years has went missing in this organisation. We have just received the report. This is the first time we have actually been able to see the allegations that was made against us. And we can answer the allegations. Now, the funders might argue that, uh, well, you know, you say that, we say this. Uh, the fact is that uh, what we have been accused of is to do with procurement. And we can answer them questions. We have done it right. Probably not as well as we've done our financial end of it, but we still did it right. But there's one thing the funders aren't telling you is that we have been pushing to get a body set up who would actually deal with procurement. Because this we're talking about dealing with consultants. I don't like consultants. Not not on a personal basis, but I just don't like people getting large amounts of money to come in and do something that can be done by individuals. And then whenever they walk away and make mistakes, they can point the finger at the organisation, not the consultant. And that's where the problem has lay here. But we can answer all these questions. So the people out there who are pointing the finger, Fair has been found innocent of any malpractice as far as any funding goes. Money been spent wrongly didn't happen. The money was spent correctly. So I want to clear that up. The other issue of the procurement was not done properly. We have only got the report and we are now in the middle of answering them questions through our legal team. The 10 points about procurement that they have raised are not close the door issues. They are issues where if you were wrong, basically what would happen would be uh, you would be fined so much for doing that procurement not 100% right or doing this other procurement not 100% right. There would be a fine for each one of them. They're not closed the door issues. Why was our doors closed? And why was these allegations not put to us until they read to us on the 23rd of July and said they were stopping our funding? They never give us the opportunity to actually answer the allegations because they didn't put any specific allegations to us. They just send a letter saying they were stopping our fun. And I have to agree, Sammy Wilson is quite right. If we have done something wrong, they are entitled to ask for the money back. But what people are forgetting here is, nobody has actually asked, have we answered the questions yet? And that's what we're in the process of doing. Answering the questions that they have in this report. That, and remember, the report was done 13 months ago, and we only got it here in November, but it was finished in October 2010. There's another attempt to try and blacken us. Uh, they linked us in with another organisation, uh, who a programme was done on, who quite clearly showed that there was a lot of things going on that shouldn't have been going on. And quite clearly, you've seen that in the programme. But now when the funders use uh, their name, they also use our name to try and make it appear that we're both involved in the same type of activity. That's not the case. As a matter of fact, it couldn't be farther from the case. But again, we're dealing with that issue as well.